Hey everyone, uh, omega-3 supplements are, I think, getting more and more popular uh, every day, and with good reason, like we're seeing omega-3 supplements or polyunsaturated fatty acids um, have a lot of potential health benefits, and so we're seeing research for these PUFAs, we call them, uh, which is short for polyunsaturated fatty acid, and which includes omega-3s. And we're seeing research on these supplements for a lot of different health conditions. Um, there's some research showing that it may be helpful for reducing pain, uh, may be helpful in the treatment of uh, chronic uh, inflammatory conditions, that it may have some benefit for digestive health, um, that may be beneficial for heart health, brain health. And fertility is one of those things that you'll find uh, online as well when they talk about omega-3 fatty acids. And so when patients are doing research on, you know, what can be helpful for uh, fertility specifically, omega-3s sometimes is that supplement that they'll read about. And so polyunsaturated uh, fatty acids or um, omega-3s in this case specifically um, may be of significant importance when it comes to uh, sperm health. For sperm health in particular, these omega-3s help to form a part of the cell membrane and they help to um, provide a little bit of more fluidity to the cell membrane. And this fluidity is actually very important for uh, fertility and for fertilization. So a very important role. Um, and when we look at supplements, sometimes it's not as straightforward as, you know, like a nutrient may be essential or very important for uh, fertility and reproductive function, but when we supplement with it, do we see that same increase in uh, fertilization capacity or not? And omega-3 uh, fatty acids are one of those supplements. So um, there are some research papers and studies looking at how giving omega-3s, for example, to a, um, a patient that's looking to improve sperm health may actually reduce sperm health. So this is kind of a, a conflict we'll see, you know, like are omega-3s helpful for fertility or are they not? And this is where we need to read a bit more into the science on how omega-3s actually work and what the downside to omega-3s may be and how to help overcome those downsides. So number one, omega-3s um, are, are a part of the cell membrane and when we consume through diet or we supplement with increased omega-3 um, um, amounts throughout the day, this increases the portion of the cell membrane that uh, includes omega-3s uh, to reflect that increased consumption, dietary or supplementing. And so when we see an increase in the amount of omega-3s present in the cell membrane of the sperm cell, omega-3s are actually very vulnerable for something called lipid peroxidation. So they're more vulnerable than typical fatty acids. and in the presence of oxidative stress, this lipid peroxidation can actually lead, lead to more damage. It can actually do the opposite. It can reduce this fluidity in the cellular membrane and that can reduce the fertilization capacity. So there are some studies looking at how, you know, just giving an omega-3 on its own may be potentially harmful for sperm health, but when combined with certain antioxidants, it's actually beneficial. So antioxidants can help to overcome this issue um, with excessive lipid peroxidation or um, too much oxidative stress. So I kind of think of it like a seesaw. So your body can either have um, a certain level of oxidative stress and then we deal with that oxidative stress through something called an antioxidant capacity. And so the antioxidant capacity can be either higher, lower. If we're seeing that the total anti antioxidant capacity in the body is lower, compared to the relative amount of oxidative stress, then we can start to see negative impacts on health, particularly uh, fertility. And oxidative stress is estimated to impact or be a part of uh, almost 30% uh, percent or estimated even high as up to 60% of infertility cases. So oxidative stress, the physiological mechanism of it uh, can lead to poor sperm health, poor egg health, and follicle integrity, and that can impact fertilization capacity and reproductive parameters. So dealing with oxidative stress is quite important. So in these studies, again, we're seeing that when we pair the omega-3s with healthy antioxidants and specific antioxidants, 
we actually do see an improvement in the sperm health. So omega-3s overall, it seems like, do have an important role in, in sperm function and the sperm's fertilization capacity. We have to look at it at an individual basis for each patient. So if we're seeing a patient that has a higher likelihood of having high levels of oxidative stress based on their past medical history, uh, current medical conditions, and um, current medications, current lifestyle, everything, then we also need to consider what we can be doing to potentially mitigate the negative impact that oxidative stress has on these omega-3s in the cell membrane. So we need to look at that on each individual case. So it just goes to show like even with something as simple as omega-3s, which in general, you know, may potentially be very helpful and very healthy, also uh, can, you know, the, the recommendations and prescriptions given to patients can vary based on a, a very personal case-to-case -case basis uh, depending on, on their medical history. And so we need to have that conversation with patients before they start supplements to make sure it's actually safe for them, what are the potential side effects, and what they can be doing to help reduce the risk of those side effects from these supplements as well. And in this case, we're referring to the omega-3s. And uh, further, if we were to break down these omega-3s into um, categories, we're, we refer to two different omega-3 fatty acids. So there's one called EPA, and there's a different omega-3 called DHA. And so even when we look at uh, omega-3 supplements, they have different amounts of these active ingredients. But in sperm, um, for sperm cellular membrane integrity, it's actually the DHA that seems to ha um, have a significant impact on uh, the cellular fluidity or the fluidity of the cellular membrane. So it actually is the DHA that seems to potentially have a bigger role in supporting sperm health compared to EPA. And DHA um, has actually been shown in some limited studies to potentially help improve sperm motility as well. So that's another consideration to take into account when we're looking at when we, you know, not only when, what do we pair the omega-3 fatty acids with, with regards to the full supplement protocol for patients that are trying to conceive, but what is the ratio of DHA to EPA and how much DHA total should they be getting? And that can vary based on age, weight, uh, health conditions, seminal food analysis, and, and etc. So if you're taking omega-3 supplements, make sure you look into that, speak with your healthcare provider, and look at what might be the optimal dose for you, what is the optimal ratio of DHA to EPA, and should you or should you not be taking any additional supplements uh, in addition to the omega-3 supplement if you are taking it to help support sperm health.